Hello there, and welcome to another iteration of Mark's Miniature Monday. What have we got on today, James? Well, I've got a gift for you, Mark. He has a gift. It, it, I always worry. What, what, it's brought me a cocktail stick, one of my favorite tools. <laughs> There's actually something attached to the There's other something end of attached it. To it. Fantastic. There's a, a clammy, ablative blade to go Wonderful. on the front of this tank that this you. This is the uh, dozer blade yeah, you yeah. promised me. Excellent. I've been wanting to get hold of there this for for some time now. Okay. So. Yeah, Mark moaned at me in a previous video where he painted this that I hadn't given him the dozer blade. Dozer blades are one of my favorite pieces of kit on any vehicle. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so now you've got it. Yep. And you've got some masking tape. I have some masking tape. This is that true. can only mean one thing. We're going to wrap the present. We're going to wrap the present. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do a quick video on how to apply really simple hazard stripes. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to expand on it. Possibly in this video, possibly in another video. We'll just mm -hmm. have to decide how it goes in the edit. Yeah. Um, with airbrushing hazard stripes onto a much bigger vehicle. I think we should do an extra video. Yeah? Yeah, I okay. think we should have this as a sponge and hazard stripes on, and then we should do a video on uh, on how to airbrush. Wow, behind the scenes, you're watching yeah. how the sausage this, is this, made. This is how decisions <laughs> are made over here. <laughs> All right, well, let's do that then. Excellent, OK. So over to you, Mark. Show fantastic. us how it's done. So this is this is the monstrosity that we're going to be giving this ablative dozer blade type thing for. Um, so I'll show me this. It's going to show yeah. out of the way. There we go. The turret. The turret's coming. It's up. all it's all falling apart. It's all falling apart. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mask this. So nice, kind of uh, hazard stripes on there at, at an angle. Nice and straightforward to do. I don't want to be messing around with with. Alternative kind of of cutting the masking. Oh, is this is five millimeter? I think it is. Is this Tamiya uh, stuff? This is Tamiya. Yeah, it might be a slightly bigger than that. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll measure that and I'll get I'll get to Joe, our IT chap, to put that on the on for you. Um, but all we're going to do is just stick it down here and we'll show okay. you how to do this. So, so first thing to do. Step is one. Step one. It's nice and straightforward. Step one. You make sure you've got your bits of masking tape already cut. Do it. You know, get that prepared beforehand. Um, and again, it's so easy to do. You literally tear it longer than what it needs to be. So there you go. That easy. There's nothing onerous about this job. I, I like easy jobs, to be fair. Yes. OK. Step two. Step two, you find the angle that you want, and you position it. There you go, like that. So now that it's, bit. It's worth mentioning you've primed this. I have primed this, And you've also yeah. varnished it. I primed and varnished. One of the biggest problems whenever you do any form of masking on miniatures is when you pull this off, let's hope it doesn't peel. There you go. When you remove the masking, it can sometimes remove the paint with it. Um, so I varnished it after I'd primed it and left the primer at least 24 hours. And, uh, and also make sure you've got a good, strong varnish on there as well. Yes. I've used uh, MIG's Lucky, um, I think it's Lucky Shot Varnish. Um, I use that because not only does it dry incredibly quickly, it also, um, it, you don't need anything to use it for an airbrush, so you can just spray Straight it on there. On. And uh, I dried it with a hairdryer applied another couple of, I think applied three coats of it ultimately. Right. I want to make sure this doesn't peel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it doesn't. I'm just going to fold that over a little bit there so it just makes it easier to handle. And then what I'm going to do is, you, this may look strange initially, I'm going to apply this next bit straight up against the other one. So maybe thinking, why are you doing that? You're not masking anything, but you'll see in a second why I'm doing this. So apply that on there. There you go. You've now got two pieces of masking tape side by side. Would you say that was step three, Mark? <laughs> I would say that was probably step three. OK, we go with step three. Step four. Step four, OK. This is, this is why James is here. Is to, he, he, he manages my projects. And what he does is, he, every time I do a different step and a miniature comes down, says, OK, yep. that's another step you've done there, Mark. Let's have a photo. Um, <laughs> so step four is uh, we bob another piece on here. This is a little trickier than usual because I'm trying to keep my head out of the way and keep some distance. So what you do is you chuck that on there. And there you go. And now you have three pieces of masking tape together. Now, the reason why we chucked that other piece of masking tape in is as a guide so that that piece of masking tape there is equidistant all the way along uh, apart from the previous one. And um, we'll just fold that over there. And there you go. And then you can repeat by doing the same process. You can use this one again. The, the other there. thing you could do is you could do it that the, the stripes kind of match in the you middle. You could. I was contemplating doing that. Um, but for the sake of this video, Much so easier. you could have it so that they're all pointing towards the center. 
and you just end up masking one part and then the other. And but for this moment, we'll just keep it so that you've just got nice clean stripes. And again, so you just do that, and we'll shut that on there. And that will do it, won't it? And that will do it, and it's that easy. So then, as you can see, you've now got six stripes, nice and meaty. If you want them to be thinner, you can either buy thinner uh, masking tape in itself, or the alternative, you can um, just trick it down. I'd recommend using it. I've not got a ruler on me, but you can just use a craft knife. And as you can see from there, it cuts instantly. Yeah. So it's that's another approach. And you can make your masking uh, tape thinner using that. So now we've done that, let's crack on with the painting. Um, so I'm going to paint it with a sponge. <gasps> I know. What I do need, though, is a palette. A palette. Well, so we'll sort that out and move on to the next step. There we go. All right, step the next. The next step. Yep. So like we just mentioned, we're going to paint the hazard stripes now. Um, so we're going to use these three paints. We've got, um, we're going to start with heavy ochre. This is uh, a game color, and it's extra opaque. Brilliant paint as far as yellows go. It applies really, as the name suggests, really opaquely. Um, yellows, especially over black, can often take, you know, you're looking at dozens and dozens of layers sometimes to yeah. try and get them intense enough. But with this heavy opaque, I'm hoping that with just a couple of layers, we should have a sufficiently opaque base layer, foundation layer. Then we've got this flat yellow, nice and vibrant. This should stand out. Um, so we're going to apply this flat yellow. We're going with a sponge to start to draw some highlights and uh, and draw the attention to different aspects of the hazard stripes. Then we're going to finish by going 50-50 mix of ivy and, and yellow together. And we'll just uh, highlight around the top edges. Again, we're going to sponge that on. Yep. So nice and easy. Not even touching a sponge on painting this. Uh, a brush. A brush. Not even <laughs> touching a brush on painting this. Excellent. All right, so you've got the paints in your palette. Yeah, um, you've unthinned. Not, yep, you've not mixed any water in, yep. and that's to keep them nice and thick. Yeah. We don't want the paints to bleed underneath the uh, uh, the, the masking that we've put on there, yeah. which can happen if you, if you start applying chucking water in there. Yeah, for sure. And it's also the reason why a sponge is a great way to apply mm. it, because you're stabbing you down with the sponge from above. Yeah. rather than those bristles potentially going underneath. Yeah, so yeah. you want to avoid that. OK, so we've got the paint already um, here. I'll bring that in here. Hopefully, that's in uh, on shot there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this sponge. I should probably have done it beforehand. I'm actually just going to quickly trim it. So I love these sponges. They're fantastic for targeting. What kind of sponges are they, James? I think it's another. We use a lot of makeup brushes and sponges in what we do. This, we? Yeah. this I think, is a, a blending brush for makeup yeah. application. So I'm trimming it down there, probably easier with a pair of scissors. There you go. You can tear it up if you want to give texture, but with this one, we want it to actually be flat because what we're doing is a uh, a flat process. Yeah. So there we go. Let's I mean, you can do this with any sponge and gradually of build course, it up. Yeah. You yeah. can do it with blister pack sponge or whatever, but this mm. is it's a much denser kind of yeah, sponge. Yeah, it's a really good sponge for kind of painting this this uh, process with. So we're going to start with the uh, heavy ochre, extra opaque, and uh, here we go. Let's just chuck this on here, and as you can see. That is incredibly opaque. It's going straight on there. We'll take another coat on top of it to get it fully opaque so you can't see any black through there. I mean, it's worth pointing out that this would work if you had painted the blade a different color. Yeah, it could have been any Then yeah. the stripe's going to be yeah. whatever color's left yeah. over. You could have painted the blade with some weathering as well yeah. before doing this. OK, well, let's give this a dry. So we had a bit of a giggle whilst we were uh, doing the sponging on here. We, we, we sped that up as well for you. You don't need to see us. Um, no, it's, it's not a complicated technique. Yeah, it's, is it, it really isn't. Um, so once you've done the first layer, you then get your second. Again, you don't want to be applying too much at the same time. And then you just kind of sponge it on there. If it's broken up and it's a bit textured, like, that's fantastic. This is, this is a military vehicle, after all. You don't want it to be looking pristine. Are you planning on doing like a more graduated effect with it darker yeah, on one side so than the other? I'm going to leave, especially down here, I'm going to leave this a bit darker and work it to a lighter tone there. And then, again, 
about here. I'm working up to the uh, lighter tone up there. I love this yellow. I need to use this yellow more often. It's fantastic. Yeah. Really, really. <laughs> One of those which has been in my uh, on my painting uh, rack for some time, and it's uh, it's found little use. But I'm I'm sold on it. It's got okay. flat yellow. Yeah, flat love yellow. It. Yeah, big fan. <laughs> So we've now applied the second sponge on layer. As you can see on there, I've intentionally left it nice and textured. If you wanted, you could go further and, and apply um, a more intense coverage on there. But I'm actually really happy with, with how that's looking. I'm liking the broken yeah. uh, effect that it's got on there from, from the sponge. So we go for this next layer. Again, exactly the same thing. You want to take some of the paint off there. And then we're focusing just on this top part. A bit more cautious now, right? A bit more cautious, yeah. We don't want to be going too heavy. So do you think there's uh, some people might do half of the stripes, sort of highlight just one side of the stripes, you just to give just it more definition? Yeah, so if you, want to do like quite, if you want to do a contrast, for example, you could. If you probably want to get a smaller sponge in this, just do down half of it there. And then, then you'd have like contrast from one side to the yeah. other. And um, whereas I went for the top half being the uh, lighter, it, you know, it's purely personal preference sure. when it comes down to it. I mean, I'm assuming you would go with the one side lighter and the other side. No, not necessarily. Yeah. I just know that that's uh, another approach that you yeah. can do. Ah, okay. It right. kind of just accentuates the shape of the stripes. It maybe yeah. looks a little bit more cartoony, to be honest. Would fit in well with your Stargrave figures. It would fit well with the Stargrave figures. Where the kind of technique we've gone for on the K47 um, miniatures bit probably grittier. wants a bit more, yeah. You want it nice and gritty. Exactly. We've gone for the realistic effect on them. Okay. okay. So we've now, there you go. Are we done? That's it. All that right. simple. So this is the moment of truth where we hope that not the paint has managed to bleed underneath the masking. If it does bleed under, don't worry about it. You just get a brush and you tidy it up. And let's have a look. So that's one. There's a tiny bit have gone under there, but that is a nominal amount. Uh, the second one, a little bit again there, but again, that's a nominal amount. We can clean that up nice and easily. And the final one, yeah, there you go. So for the sake of what, what was that? Ten minutes work. Yeah, about. I mean, that. that was ten minutes work, including description. If you're doing your own, that would be five minutes of effort. You've got yourself a dozer blade, which will stick on the front. It's got this graduated highlight to it as well. Um, you could even finish it off by. So there you go. I think that's quite striking actually. You could finish it off by applying a bit of uh, weather on there with a. Um, with the silver. Actually, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Joe, so silver the, paint, To please. the sponge chamber. All right, so we couldn't resist adding some more weathering. So the first thing you've done, you've got a more coarse sponge here, yep. right? We do. We've got more coarse sponge. I'll put some black on there. What I'm going to do is, is just touch that onto here. Hopefully, it will actually apply some paint. And it'll make it appear, hopefully, as if the yellow stripes have taken a bit of damage and it's chipped away. And the great thing about this is not only does it make it look like the yellow paint's chipped, it hides some of the sins. Yes. The, uh, you don't have to go in and paint in paint the detail. It. Yeah, we, again, it's, it's a couple of minutes process. There you go. It looks like some of the paint's been chipped off and it takes all of 20 seconds. Do me a favor, do a really big ch chunk out of the top there. Yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, let's get some more paint on yeah, that. Yeah, I want, I want like right across the yeah. top edge, I want you to chunk it out. So as you can see on there, we've just made we've broken up the surface of the yellow a little bit with uh, with some black paint. If you want to use a brush, you can do. You can work in there and do some specifically targeted uh, weathering points on there, which could be quite cool to do. You could do some more lines as opposed to lines, uh, yeah. dots. This is more just where things have spotted against yeah. it. Uh, but you could you could go in there and get some nice neat lines done. And uh, what we're going to do now is is add a bit of silver to represent the uh, all of the paint, not just the um, the yellow having been broken away, but also the uh, the black. So we'll dab some of that off, and then let's chuck this on here. And you can use this to highlight along the edge. Focusing on maybe on some of the edge points yeah. rather than everywhere. But on a, exactly. on a blade on the front, it's going to be taking so many hits it's that you could really put it in any The whole part of the whole purpose of this is as an ablative armor, isn't it? So uh, you would imagine it would take quite a few hits. Yep. So you can just go for it and break it up, up as much as you want. Go quite heavy. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Well, do you want me to play anymore? Are you good with that? I. It's your favorite. I'm pretty happy with that. It's my it's gift cool. to you. Yeah. Then you can finish it off using a weathering pencil if you want, just to draw attention to the edges, as we did with the miniature itself, and then it all ties in nicely together. And 
and it looks like it's part of the same miniature because that's one of the problems if you paint things in different techniques and they try and fix them together they look like a different miniature so we just want to get this done nice and swiftly and then you know you can add a few marks on there as well rub the pencil on there to make it fade a little brush the end again smooth it in it's almost criminal how quick you've done that isn't it it actually, this is seems unfair. It's, it's it's remarkable how quick it is to paint something and make it look effective and for the tabletop, given how long. Even my, you know myself uh, historically, I'd, I'd spend so long painting things, and and that took what, fifteen minutes at most. At most. At most. So there we go. Excellent. That's the uh, dozer ablative armor. Uh, it's all, a catchy all, name. It's, <laughs> a, it's a very catchy name, but all sorted and ready to be uh, fixed to the miniature. Nice. Excellent. And so here's the finished uh, miniature in all its glory. Maybe if I wasn't trying to be so quick, I would probably have gone for slightly thinner uh, stripes on there, uh, which would probably work better with the scale. But if you did like this video and you found it helpful and you'd like to receive uh, alerts for future hints and tips on how to paint your miniatures, uh, like and subscribe. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.